Hello everybody, my name is Mahadish Bande. In this video, I want to scale up our uh, single perceptron into this multi-layered uh, perceptron or, or this neural network. And so I'm going to kind of generalize uh, the, this notion of what happens when we have multiple neurons and what happens when we have, uh, you know, what happens when we have different, more layers, for example. So, you know, so let, let's see, you know, how we can model this. So neural network. The neural network, and so we can model this like our perceptron, but we have more than just a single perceptron. And in fact, we kind of have three uh, different kinds of layers in in a neural network. If we're generalizing this, we have an input layer, and so here is my layer. This dot 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 just means we can have any number. So we'll have like x1, x2, and xn. So I have this as my my input layer here and what happens is from between my input and my my output I can have an I can have just you know an output layer and that's kind of what we had uh, w with our with our AND gate we're doing our AND gate is that we just had the we had two um, we had two neurons here and these were the input layer so the input layer was just x1 and x2 and then the output layer was just a single Neuron here being a y, so these I these can actually these are actually represented as neurons as as well. So the inputs are also uh, neurons; they just have a single value. And so here's my input layer, and then I can have an output layer here. So like suppose I have you know an, an output layer here. That's like you know uh, y one two y M, let's say. Let's suppose there are n neurons in the input layer and m neurons in the output layer. And so I can, the, the way that the neural network works is between two layers, everything is, every neuron is connected to every other neuron between uh, any two consecutive uh, layers. So for example, x, x1 would be connected to y1, x2 would be connected to y1, all of these would be connected to y1, and xn would be connected to y1. And then for any other of the intermediary ones, you know, like y2, x1 is connected to y2, x2 is connected to y2, and, you know, and, and so on. And then all the way to ym. So now x1 is connected to ym, x2 is connected to ym, and, and so on. And so then every neuron in this layer here, this, um, so let me actually go over this as well. So this is output. So every layer, layer, every neuron in this input layer is connected to every neuron in the output layer, and that's what we call fully connected. And so this is fully connected, which is why also these are also called fully connected layers sometimes, or FC. Um, these are also abbreviated very commonly as FC layers, because every neuron is connected to every other neuron between these two layers. And so this is kind of how we have. You know, an input and an output, but so this is like a very simple one-layer uh, network here, right? So this is just like uh, that layer here. There's no what we call hidden layers, and so we can add, we can increase this by adding what we call hidden layers, and the hidden layers go in between the input and the output, and so the the hidden layers, for example, would be, you know, again, it can have any number of, of neurons, and so like maybe this is like H1 for hidden layer, and this is like, you know, H, um, you know, H sub P, so that there's uh, N inputs, P neurons in the hidden layer, and then M uh, neurons in the output layer. But remember that they're only connected, they're fully connected between two consecutive layers. So what I mean by this is, X1 is not now is no is not directly connected to Y1, but X1 is connected to H1, you no, know, and X2 is connected to H1, and you know so on and so on here, and then you no know, with a special and then again with H2, X1 is connected to H2, X2 is connected to H2, and so on and so on until we get to this very last uh, layer here. This uh, H sub P, and so all of these are connected internally here, and then 
Then H1 is then connected to Y1 and 2 and 3 and, and, and so on. And then same for this neuron here. And then we just get this sort of uh, nice pattern uh, here. So this is, you know, then, I think I missed one. Okay. So then this is, you know, what we have. And so in between two consecutive layers, all the neurons in those two layers are all connected to each other. And that's what we call fully connected. And so this is actually called the hidden layer because it's and actually we can have more than one hidden layer we can have two hidden layers and then all the neurons in the first hidden layer are connected to all the neurons in the second hidden layer which are connected to all the neurons in the output you know and so we can kind of stack these uh, as deep as we want and so let's con you know let's actually consider a more concrete uh, problem and that is with this uh, this kind of data set called the uh, MNIST Handwritten, handwritten digits, and this is kind of like the uh, kind of like the hello world of of uh, neural networks and deep learning. Is we have these handwritten uh, digits, and they're kind of they're, there's images, but we can flatten them out into just a list of of numbers. And the goal is to given a given a digit, be able to tell whether it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. And so, you know, using MNIST, we actually have, you know, 10 output, you know, classes, right? And those classes are 0, 1, 2, all the way to 9. So that's all 10 digits. And so that's kind of the goal with the, the MNIST data set is to pick which one of these digits is the correct one given some input digit and so the goal of building this neural network AI is to train it on lots of examples of uh, MNIST digits and so that way when it sees a new digit that it's never seen before it can be able to correct it can correctly predict what uh, what kind of digit it is whether it's 0, 4, 7, or 9 and so what happens you know how we actually compute this is that so you might be saying, how would we actually do this computation? So what happens is we take our image and we flatten it out into you know, one giant list of numbers called a vector. And so that kind of works as the input. And then we, again, we apply the same perceptron idea where these are all weights. So all these connections that I've drawn here are actually all weights. And they're all different weights. And, you know, there's also a, a bias here, and then there's, you know, another bias. But the, these are all weights, and these are all parameters that we want our, our neural network to learn. So these weights and these biases are the actual learning, is the actual learning that's happening here. And so initially they're just set to any random value. So when we run this through our neural network initially, uh, it's, it's going to, we're going to get some pretty bad output. But as we, tr as it sees more and more examples, and as we learn, uh, it's good. The output is going to get better and better, and we can visually see that. We can you know, visualize our, you know, like something like our accuracy. We can visualize our accuracy, and it should be going up. We should be getting more accurate as we see more examples. And so, how this computation actually works is, I'm um, kind of going back to that. Is you take our input image, we flatten it onto a vector, we apply that perceptron rule. So then we take this particular value here, multiply it by this weight. Here and it goes into the input of H1. Then we take the same X1 multiplied by this other weight, it goes into H2, and, and so on and so on. And then these H, this hidden layer computes its own values, and then it you know, submits it to the output layer, and then the output layer computes a value, and then kind of at the end of like this output layer, so this output layer, we kind of get a uh, we get a Kind of like we get probabilities basically. We get probabilities uh, for each class. And so what that means is when I input an image, I get a list of prob I get a list of ten probabilities if I'm using MNIST. And so each of these probabilities are the likelihood that my input is, you know, in falls in each of these classes. So, you know, suppose if I get if I run a particular 
example through my neural network and I get that the um, you know I get that the output distribution I know like there's a 95 one of the probabilities is 95 percent of uh, five for example then then I know that I should be selecting this digit should be a five because it has the highest probability and uh, it does the highest like it's very likely that this input is a five for example and so that's kind of what the output layer does and the output layer can can decide that so basically um, what, what we're trying to do with this is we, we get this forward pass thing going on so you take it's called a forward pass so you take this input and you feed it through and you just kind of keep passing on from one layer to to the other so you start with the input then you pass it on to this hidden layer and the hidden layer passes it on to the uh, the output and the output finally computes uh, this and so you just kind of pa keep passing on the activations from from one to the other so and then eventually at the end you get a probability distribution and you pick the most likely one if you're using uh, this this softmax uh, um, distribution but yeah so that's then you just pick the most likely one so that's kind of how that uh, works so I'm a little out of time but so I'm gonna stop right here and just do a quick recap so with with these these neural networks um, I in this video we kind of saw what happens when we scale these uh, scale these up so instead of just having a single perceptron and two inputs, what happens when we have more inputs, what happens when we have n inputs specifically, and what, what happens when we have different more layers, for example? And so this kind of helps answer that question where we have an input, we can have three input, any number of hidden layers, and then an output. And then we have this forward pass, or also called feed forward, where you just take the input and you send it off to the first hidden layer and then it computes those activations using the same perceptron rule and then it passes those activations on to the next hidden layer and then the next hidden layer computes its activations and then you just kind of keep passing it on until you get to the end and the output layer and then the output layer's job is to take those activations from the last hidden layer and then build a probability distribution over all the possible classes so in this case for MNIST for example like I mentioned which was handwritten digits there are 10 digits, and so uh, what happens is it will produce a, a distribution for all of these 10 digits, and so it'll tell you something like, oh, there's a 97% chance that this input that you gave me is an 8, and so then I just pick the high, one with the highest probability, the highest likelihood, and so then that's what the output layer does, and then eventually I get a single value back saying I give an image, and the output I get is this, I am, you know, this percent confident that this is an 8, for example, and so that's kind of how we do this. Uh, feed forward neural network but the real thing the real question is where's the learning happening what are we actually learning and so in between all these layers in these layers connections here we have these weights and biases exactly like what we have for our single instead of having two we have you know however many uh, we need from uh, the for, you know, to go from these two different layers and so we have these this this weight matrix and this bias vector, and those are the things that we want to learn. And so, how do we actually learn these things? Um, I'm going to kind of give you an intuitive way uh, on how we do that with gradient descent uh, very soon. And so, we can look at these weights and these biases, and basically, the, the idea is that we can we want to minimize our error and increase our accuracy. And so, we can make changes to these weights, these linking these little changes to these weights and these biases so that we can uh, increase our accuracy or minimize our error.